Shree Permanand is 41 years old and lives in a village in northern India. He's been married more than 20 years and has six children, but he won't have any more. Two days ago, Shree Permanand had a vasectomy, a short, simple operation which made him sterile. Once his stitches have been removed, he can go home. Before leaving, Tree Permanent collects his wages, 60 rupees or nearly as much as he earns in a week as a court stenographer. But the real reward, as far as he's concerned, is rather more than that. From now on, he and his wife will no longer have to worry about the extra burden which another child would place on the family's already stretched budget. Shri Permanand is one of millions of Indians who volunteer to take part in the government's massive program of population control. It's a policy that's revolutionizing the life of many low-income families and one which is of crucial importance for the future of India. Population control is not new in India. It's been a part of national policy since the early 1950s and India is still the only country in the world where contraceptive facilities are so widely available. This is just one of a hundred family planning centers in Haryana state. And Haryana is one of India's smallest states. So far, more than six million Indian men and women have been sterilized. And the aim is to take sterilization or some other effective form of contraception to at least 90 million Indian couples of childbearing age. The birth control program has already had some effect. At 547 million, India's present population is about 14 million less than had been expected. Even so, it's still rising by 2.5% a year and that's enough to cancel out most of the benefits that should come from economic growth. The government's pinning its hopes on the sterilization program. For men, vasectomy involves only a local anesthetic. The surgeon makes a small incision on each side of the scrotum and locates the small tube which carries the sperm from the testicles to the seminal vesicle. The tube, known as the vas deferens, is severed and tied back on itself so that the sperm is no longer ejaculated with the seminal fluid. To qualify, men have to be married with at least two children and the target age is between 25 and 35. In the past, however, there have been instances where overzealous local officials have brought in boys of 15 and old men scarcely able to walk, let alone procreate. There have even been cases of villagers being bullied into the operation against their will. And in one campaign last year, eight men died after the operation, apparently through surgical negligence. Officials are now highly aware of such abuses and have tightened up the controls to avoid any repetition. The operation does not, of course, have any effect on the patient's sexual performance, although officials sometimes have difficulty in explaining the difference between sterilization and castration to backward peasants. After the operation, men are kept in the ward for 48 hours, and even after they've been discharged, they're followed up for seven days to make sure there are no post-operative complications.
Vasectomy is not effective immediately, so the men are given a supply of condoms which they'll need to use for the first few weeks. Further insurance is provided by a new law which makes abortions available to women who've conceived due to failure of a contraceptive device or operation. For many of the patients, farmers and general laborers, the 60 rupee reward is almost the equivalent of a month's wages. Birth control is not the sole responsibility of men, of course. For women, there's the contraceptive loop. The loop, or interuterine device, is quickly fitted and removed from the womb by a doctor without the need for even a local anesthetic. The operation is thus much easier to reverse than a vasectomy, and fertility can be restored if the family's circumstances change. Loops were a prominent feature of the early years of the birth control program, and well over a million have been fitted. But the device is not suitable for all women, and needs careful fitting and supervision to be successful. Like the oral contraceptive pill, it's no longer as popular with Indian women as it used to be. Women who don't want the loop and whose husbands are unsuitable for one reason or another for vasectomy can undergo sterilization themselves. The operation is known as tubectomy and involves the severing and tying off of the fallopian tubes along which the egg travels on its way to the womb. Tubectomy is carried out under a general anaesthetic and once performed is not reversible. One of the most remarkable aspects of the birth control campaign is the way in which Indian women have overcome their shyness and in many cases their religious scruples in order to free themselves from the burden of families they cannot afford to feed. Every completed sterilization is seen as a victory in the battle against the poverty which an uncontrolled population would bring. But it's an uphill battle, and the irony is that it's due in part at least to the progress India's made in the last few years. Improvements in health and hygiene, and especially in prenatal and postnatal care, have meant that Indians are now living longer, and far fewer of them are dying in infancy. In the quarter century since independence, for example, the average life expectancy has doubled from 27 years to well over 50. That may mean a headache for the government, but for these children it's a blessing. Two or three children, enough, says the song, and these men at least are prepared to agree. In depriving themselves of the ability to procreate, they've gone against their own pride, not to mention their religious obligations as Hindus, to ensure at all costs that there are enough sons and daughters to continue the family line. Will their sacrifice be worthwhile? India's problems are immense and highly complex, but it's possible to summarize the essential difficulties in a few simple facts. The country has 15% of the world's population, living in less than 2.5% of the world's area, 
and earning only 3% of the world's income. The population is increasing by 13 millions every year. And even if the birth control program succeeds beyond the planner's wildest dreams, there will still be over a thousand million Indians by the end of the century. Throughout the length and breadth of India, the government is quite literally drumming in the facts about the need for birth control. In a country of 3,000 towns and no fewer than half a million villages, it's difficult enough to get any aspect of government planning over to the masses. But the government is determined that this is one message which simply can't be allowed to go astray.